49 inches of ultra wide display. 49 inches. I've finally got my hands on one, folks. And with a resolution of 5120 by 1440, this is the most jaw-dropping display I have ever used. But can you go too wide? I'm sure Kylo Ren wouldn't think so, but realistically, if you're in the market for a new monitor, is something like this really what you want? The display Philips loaned out is called the 499P9H, and at the time of filming, it's currently the highest spec super ultra-wide monitor that you can buy today, with a class-leading Quad HD resolution and a maximum variable refresh rate of 70Hz. The whole idea behind a monitor like this is to act as a dual-screen setup, but without the bezels, to give you a much cleaner look and allow for applications like Photoshop and DaVinci Resolve to actually fully utilise all of those pixels when you're setting them to full screen. Philips actually asked me to promise not to focus on the gaming side of things, as it's not really aimed at the PC master race. Instead, it's equipped with things like USB-C, Ethernet and an audio jack, and you can even use two computers side by side and then share a single set of peripherals between the two for a really seamless workflow. I actually have to disagree with Philips though, as of course the first thing I did with this display was to fire up Apex Legends, and to my surprise it actually offered a really engaging gaming experience. The long and short of it is that the input lag is definitely on the higher side, so if you want to play competitively, obviously it's not really the screen for you. But I'm quite used to it by now, as I play a whole mix of different titles, and the level of immersion from such a huge display really can't be undersold, as it's such a charming experience, I would wager that it would please even the most die-hard triple monitor connoisseur. There are problems however, as while I could get used to the input lag, the level of motion sickness in first-person shooters really wasn't fun after the initial wow factor, and as cool as it looks, a lot of games still don't really display correctly in the 32 by 9 aspect ratio. But if you do fire up something like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, then it really is the dream setup. That cliche word there, the dream, epic, ultimate setup. Just look at my Twitter feed for a second. I could not stop taking in-game screenshots. Nvidia's latest driver update also lets Team Green unlock the FreeSync aspect of this monitor, and the adaptive sync actually seemed to work very well when playing above 48 frames per second. Then again, I'm also using an RTX 2080 Ti for my testing, that really accessible, really cheap graphics card. So I guess when you factor in just how hard this thing is to actually drive and play games at 70 hertz at this resolution, all right, Philips, I guess it's not really a gaming display. Physically speaking, the monitor is fairly well constructed, with an inoffensive industrial look, visa mounting standard, and a pretty oversized stand. Unfortunately, despite this, the whole unit is still quite wobbly. I guess it's to be expected for something this wide and this heavy, and in real world use, well, it's not been an issue. The design team at Philips, though, have been hard at work, as they've rather cleverly added a Windows Hello camera inside the top of the monitor, which pops out whenever you want to use it, which in theory should allow for very easy login, but sadly it didn't always register when connected via USB-C, and the actual quality of the webcam is, well, questionable at best. The panel within the display is VA, and it comes with a calibration report right in the box for peace of mind. It's a very capable display, with over 100% of sRGB and 94% of the DCI-P3 colour space, but in my eyes it actually looks a little flat out of the box, so I'd advise the use of a calibration tool to really get this thing looking its best. As for the HDR, or high dynamic range, it is indeed supported, but only over HDMI and DisplayPort. It's a great feature, and it does add a little bit of pop to movies and games, but at 400 nits it's rather limited, and it's not going to offer any real wow factor. So if you are after the eye-blinding HDR experience, you should instead look at Samsung's CRG9, as this comes equipped with 1000 nits of peak brightness and an even faster refresh rate. I'm quite impressed with how easily I've adjusted to such a unique monitor, as while there are some best practices and a learning curve, it is something I could use every day. If you took out the competitive gaming elements that live within my life, this would suit me down to a T. I've found that snapping windows and creating a multi-view setup works better than with any other screen format out there, and having such a huge timeline for video editing really does help to speed up the workflow. There are endless applications where something like this could prove useful, as it's not only ideal for productions, 
but any real sort of work that requires a lot of stuff on screen at the same time. So if you're sick of twisting your back between two separate monitors, you're bored of having ugly bezels that are stuck between you and eternal happiness, or you have an RTX 2080 Ti and you absolutely adore single player games, then this is the monitor for you. But for everyone else, I don't know, it is very big. Look at my poor speakers, demoted to second place. Would this even fit on your desk? Let me know down in the comment section below, along with your thoughts as always. If you do want to check out current pricing, I'll leave my Amazon affiliate links down in the description below. But this has actually been a really fun video to make. If you've enjoyed it, please hit the like button and obviously get subscribed for more reviews just like this. And as soon as that Samsung one comes out, I will try and get hold of that as that is more of a gaming-y display. So we'll be putting that through its paces. But yeah, a massive thank you to you guys for watching this video. Asus for sponsoring the channel as always and to Philips for loaning out this review sample. Thank you, I'll see you in the next one.